Okay, one more thing here before we go on to actually creating our long-term keyword strategy, a long-tail keyword strategy, is we can create this definition, visual definition of what the long-tail keyword strategy is. So I'm going to draw a little picture here. I get to use our $5,000 pen uh, to do this now. So I'm going to um, create a simple X and Y axis. And um, on the on the vertical, uh, we've got uh, frequency. Then on the horizontal, we've got keyword. The actual. graph then goes something like this okay so reading the graph this is our graph of the long tail keyword strategy reading this we look at our axes. There are some keywords that we can use on our website that are found a lot on search engine results and other websites. The frequency of some keywords over here, web design, are being used by a lot of websites. I'm a needle in a haystack then, because all of these other companies are also using that keyword. As we go further over here, there are some keywords less frequent, less people using them. I might have an easier time to be found with those keywords. However, going too far out, there are some keywords that very few people are using or searching for. So then I've got the opposite of a needle in a haystack. Uh, no one's looking for me. No one's looking for those keywords. So somewhere in the middle, uh, based on a variety of factors, we don't know exactly where you lie, but somewhere here, not so far out here that you are not being searched for, and not so far over here that you're being lost in the crowd, somewhere is where your keywords will be. What are the keywords, what are the phrases, what is the content about your website that people are searching for that will help you get found. In order to find this out, this is the part where we'll have this activity where we engage in some competitor analysis. I need to see what is the competition doing, um, how can I uh, do things better, what, how can I avoid what they're doing, how can I stand out from the competition. But the idea of the long word keyword strategy is this. Uh, there are certain keywords used less, certain keywords that are used more. We need to find the ones right in the middle somewhere. I'm going to put this graphic in the network folder, if you'd like a copy of it. And I've got a handout for you, a new handout in the network folder. Let me remind you where the network folder is at. And let me put the, that graphic in there. And these notes that I've been writing so far, I haven't put them in there yet because I'm not done writing them yet. But the network folder is right here. In your desktop, double-click computer on the top left there. So open up computer, then open classroom data drive Z. Uh, open up that one right there, classroom data drive Z. Z is in zebra, and then you will find Campos SEO. Open that one, and the um, what you want to copy. Don't just open it here. You want to copy it to your desktop, or flash drive, or email it to yourself. There's the syllabus, so my email is there, uh, and the calendar. There's the graphic I just made, the long tail keyword strategy. If you want that, 
And then what we're going to use right now is the Campos SEO1 long tail strategy. So go ahead and get a copy of that. And uh, let's open it and let's talk about what it's about and then we'll see about using this. Okay, so in this handout. Now, uh, again, there's no homework in the class. You don't have to turn any of this in. This is for your own improvement of your website. Um, I can look at it if you want me to, but you, you don't have to turn this in and you're not going to be graded on it. So nowadays search engines don't rank your site very well unless you have good content. It's not just about simple keywords. You're not going to be found when people search for Italian restaurants. You have a better chance of being found with authentic Italian food in Chula Vista, the long tail. If you understand your niche better, you'll be able to potentially rank better. And in this activity, we'll, we'll, we'll start to figure out yours. So again, I have here the qualifier, potentially. Right? I, don't, I, I can't guarantee that you follow these tactics and you'll be number one. But think about it like this. Maybe at the moment when people search, you appear on page three. And through the work that we will do in our effort, maybe you'll move up and you'll be on page two, and then page one. Maybe we can't quite get to number one, page one, because of various factors. But maybe now I'm on number one. Maybe now I'm appearing on that map. Maybe now I'm getting some of those deep links compared with before that I wasn't ranking that I was on page 7, that uh, I didn't stand out from the crowd. So if, I, if my company is hired to do this for a client, we tell them right away, we're going to do all the best that we can to have your company rank better and get you traffic and sales and all of that. But we, can't, we cannot guarantee that you will be number one in X amount of time, or really even ever, because sometimes really to get to number one, it's PPC or it's other things that we can't quite get over because your competition is too well established or there's too much competition and such factors. So we've got here um, the actual competitor analysis. It sounds complex, but it really is just looking at the competition. It's analyzing what the competition has. It's, it's reconnaissance for the competition. So in the notes here, competitor analysis, is using all the publicly available publicly 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 available information about your competitor 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 or competitors to compile a bio or a um, dossier about them. So you can create something better. So you can engage in something better. So you can see what they're about and how you're similar, how you're different, how you're better, how you can do different things compared to the competition. So. In my example document there, we're going to use the search engines. Recommended to use both, Google and Bing, but you can do only one if you want to. Because all of this really relates to how much time you have. A lot of us have a business. We're trying to run the business, but now I've also got to do competitor analysis. Now I've also got to get on social media. Now I've also got a blog. I'm running my business. That's why you hire other people to do it or you do it at your own pace. There's no, there's no race for this, really. Yes, you want your company to be profitable and successful, and that could be a motivator, but um, there's no race to, to do this. And the non-paid versions of all of this, which we focus on, is slow. Remember I said, take out your credit card, let's go do some PPC, you're number one tomorrow. But then you have to keep paying, you have to keep up to date with it that way. This method takes longer, but it does build a foundation that, that also lasts. 
once you stop paying, slowly you'll start to drop from number one. Maybe not overnight, but you'll start to drop. But maybe that bump was enough, or maybe it's not enough. So doing these things that we'll talk about here in the long term could pay off. Okay, so we'll go to a search engine, search for a simple keyword from your topic. It doesn't have to be literally one word. Web design is a keyword. It's two, it's two words, but it's a keyword. We're going to search for basic keywords about what your business is. You don't have to put in about San Diego and affordable and all of that yet. That's in the second part, the new way. But we're going to search. We're going to get a page of results. And then for the first page of results, write the title and description from each real site. Then we're going to look at each of those uh, sites, the competition, and just write notes about what we see. So as the example, taco shop. When I say about real results, I see Grubhub, Grubhub result. You can buy their food and it's takeout, but it's not their website. I see Yelp for Glorious Taco Shop. It's not their website. These are these aggregator sites, these review sites. I want to look at examples of real websites. Roberto's Taco Shop right there. Lucha Libre Taco Shop right there. Lolita's Mexican Food. Those are real ones. Those are ones that go directly to a company's um, website. And the way I would do this is, we've got Microsoft Word on these computers. I would recommend opening that up and writing what we're going to write here, because we're going to do a little copy and paste. We can write it on plain old, plain old paper, but I do recommend to maybe do it digitally, because you can take notes a little better. If you'd like to, you can open Word and then start a blank document. Uh, I'm going to save this on my flash drive. I'll give you a copy of it if you want as an example. This will be my competitor analysis document. This competitor analysis and long tail keyword strategy. And what I want to do is first copy and paste. First, copy and paste uh, some results. Simply like just grabbing this whole chunk right here, Lucha Libre, etc. I'm just going to copy that whole thing. And then in Word, I would recommend to do right click, paste as keep text only. If you copy and paste normally with a regular old Control C, Control V to paste, it's going to come in with the style and the color and the links and all that other distracting stuff you might not need. If instead you uh, you right click, you've got the option there in Word, keep text only. It's not as distracting as that. Can you repeat that? In my uh, example right now, I'm just searching for very simply taco shop. So I'm going to right click, keep text only. That's one result. Uh, the more of these you collect, the better competitor analysis you have. I'm going to pick two or three of these results, then we'll break down what, what we're getting. But another example that I got, second one, Lolita's Mexican Food. So again, I'll just copy that whole chunk of result. Copy. I'm going to paste it into my Word document, then I'll do the same thing for the next one. I'll do three, just to give you a starting point. Right click, paste text only. And then the third one. These are three possible competitors. I've got a taco shop. There are other taco shops, surprisingly, that exist in San Diego. Surprisingly, on this street, there is competition. So I need to see what the competition is. Competitor analysis. This is something that we would do for our clients. This is what competitor analysis is and has always been using publicly available information to create a dossier or a 
profile or a biography on the competition for you to then improve upon. Okay, so for the first few pages, write the title description from each real site. Again, I'm not going to do the result of Yelp or TripAdvisor or whatever. I want results of real websites. And you see from every result in Google and Bing and Yahoo and DuckDuckGo, we get the same thing. We get a title of the website, we get an address of the website, we get a description, and we may get the links or not. So to break down the anatomy of what we're looking at here, this is meta title. This one is URL or web address. This is meta description. And uh, optional result based on various factors, uh, optional uh, result, uh, deep links. I didn't get deep links for these other sites. That's what these things are. And you would get something very similar on Bing. I would want to do what we're doing here for both Google and Bing. Just for speed of time that we have, I'll only do it for Google. But I would want to see what different results do I get. And I can compare and contrast. Do I get the same kind of result for Lucha Libre in both search engines or not? Meta title, yes? That's what, what I'm about to say right here. You can edit this URL. You can edit this description. You can edit this deep links. You can't quite edit this. The, the, the search engine does determine this to various degrees, although you can suggest to it what should appear but you can't fully go in and change what appears. So the search engine determines that to some degree. Yes. What it believes your site is about as you engage in SEO. So in the old days when dinosaurs ruled the earth and Yahoo was number one, uh, the search engines would uh, determine your rankings based on the content of your site. Well, obvious, it still does it, but in a different way. In the old days, if I had the, the keyword taco shop 10 times on my home page and 10 times in my about page and taco shop also in my web address, if I had that keyword taco shop all over my website, Yahoo would determine, hey, this site's about a taco shop. And someone just searched taco shop, so we'll put them number one. <coughs> and that worked for a long time. Then the spammers came and they said, okay, we are selling a whole bunch of stuff and we are trying to spe steal people's passwords, and we are trying to give people viruses. We want people to come to our site. We're going to use the keyword taco shop, and we're going to put it 40 times on our home page, and 30 times in our about page, and put taco shop on our address, tricking the search engine and becoming number one. And then people might have clicked and gotten infected or identity thefted, so the search engines had to change. Add a title. You can edit this. All of these are one of the many factors to help you rank. Just because we master these four things doesn't mean we'll be number one. Because if I can master this, so can the spammers. So there's plenty of more that we'll talk about. But this is a perfect spot for your keywords. We haven't developed the keywords yet. It comes from the analysis. But on your site, there is a place for you to edit your title of your page. Uh, meta title can be different and oftentimes should be different per page. On the home page, I want to have a quick, concise description of what this is about. Mexican food in San Diego. The name of my business is almost secondary, almost not even necessary, because the important part is Mexican food, San Diego. Even though I search for taco shops, 
That's a related term, Mexican food. And I'm in San Diego, so I don't care about an amazing taco shop in New York or Moscow, Idaho. I care about an amazing taco shop in San Diego. So it knew San Diego, even though I didn't really put San Diego, just because the search engines are smarter nowadays and the web browsers automatically give out this information of location and such. And if I've got a contact page, when someone visits a contact page of a website, what are they often looking for? Phone number, email, stuff like that. You can put your phone number right in your meta title of your about page or contact page. And therefore, if it comes up uh, on the results page here and it, and it says right there your phone number, the person might not even need to click the link to go to your website. They have your number, they'll call you and place the order. So if you've got some of that information easily fa fa found by your uh, customers, in a sense, they might not even need to visit your site. They have what they need. They contact you. They purchase from you, etc. But don't you really want them to go to your site ultimately? I mean, possibly because let's say, do they need to go to my site to order? They just need the phone number. They need the phone number. They call me. They place the order. Right. Yes, obviously, if I'm selling the product on my website, I need them to go to the website. And most of the time, I'm going to say like at least 98% of the time, yes, I want them to come to my website. But sometimes, simply this information that they see right away on a Bing or Google result is enough. And that's so going to vary. On the, I mean, you're selling food. If you were selling a product or service, you would really want them to go to the site and fill out a contact yeah. information. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it does depend on the business. Some, uh, that little preview is enough. But for most, yes, they do want to visit the site. Okay, so the URL of the address. Gray hat, put your keywords in the title. It's gray hat in that it's not good, it's not bad, it's a bit passe, it's not that important. Yes, the number one result is Lucha Libre Taco Shop.com, which is the exact keyword that I searched for. These other ones from uh, lolitasmexicanfood.com. Number two is not terrible, it's still on page one, but they don't have taco shop in their address. And then the next one right here, El Rey, uh, El Rey Moro, taco shop.com, okay, has taco shop in the address, but they're still number three. Why aren't they number two higher than Lolitas? A lot of reasons why, but the thing is that I'm getting at is it's not as important to have your keywords in your title, in your address anymore, like it used to be used to be very important. I need to get San Diego taco shop.com. You're not going to get it. Someone claimed it 20 years ago. Websites have been around for more than 25 years. Uh, getting up now to 30 years. The first websites were from 1989. That's 30 years ago. I keep saying 20 and 25 years. I've been teaching this class a while, but now we're getting to 30 years. We've had 30 years of websites. The internet is older. It's from the 60s. But websites are just about 30 years old. So if you just got the idea that you're going to put your family business that you've had for 50 years, you're going to put it online, and you're going to get sandiwatakashop.com, someone took it 20 years ago. So that's why it's not so important to have those keywords in your address anymore. And anyway, taco shop is not the only uh, important keyword, right? What what do other people? What are what are other keywords people may search for if they want to find a good taco shop? Carne asada. Carne asada. Fish tacos. <laughs> fish tacos. So, am I going to try to get San Diego Fish Tacos dot com? Someone took it. You had that great idea, and so did someone else ten years ago. So it's not that important. I'm not going to create a site called Victor's Taco Shop and Carne Asada and uh, Fish Tacos dot com. You could. But no one's going to remember or type that huge address, and it doesn't matter. People don't see your web address that much, and neither do the search engines. They, they go to Lucha Libre, and they don't know that it's LuchaLibreTacoShop.com. They know about Lolita's Mexican food, but they don't know the address. They, they know El Rey Moro, but they don't know the full name. They don't need to. And the search engine doesn't care about it as much as it used to. But that, 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 that first font, that first part of it, that's your meta title. 
Yes. So, for example, the header on your homepage. Nope, this is coming from a certain screen on your site. Uh, like if you're using WordPress or Dreamweaver or whatever, there's a certain screen where you put that in, and that's separate from the first thing you see on your homepage. No, we'll, we'll cover it here too. We'll do it in the WordPress class, but we'll, we'll cover it that these are things to change on your site as well. Um, so put your keywords in the title. Not as important anymore to have keywords there. Because you may think you know what the keyword is and you put it into your title. But then actually, that's not the best keyword for your business or your industry, and you're stuck with it there. So it's not as useful as it used to be. Because if you think about it, before you knew what it was, what's a Facebook? We know what it is now. But when you first heard it, what's a Facebook? What is this, like a, a website that sells yearbooks? Or like what, what do they do? Uh, what's What's a Twitter? You know, that's what birds do. Uh, you chat with people? How does that make sense? You know, all of these sites, these modern sites with these names that don't make sense. Twitter, Facebook, Flickr, Snapchat. What's a Snapchat? That doesn't make sense in the real world, but it makes sense as a social network. And there's all of these sites, you know, like Flickr.com, Dribble. I think there's three Bs on that. Behance. You know, just by the names of these sites, what's what's a Behance? What's if you don't know if you know about it, don't answer. But if you don't know what it is, what would you say Behance.com is about? Something about enhancing, being enhanced? I don't know. And it doesn't matter. What I'm getting at is that names nowadays they almost don't even matter. Your URL almost doesn't even matter. Behance is a website where you show off your creative projects to get hired as a web designer or graphic designer. Okay, I can obviously tell what that is by the title. Dribble is related to that as well. This is a website where I put my work online to try to get hired as a graphic designer. Doesn't make sense. I thought it was a website about basketball. Flickr.com. Well, that's just, you know, a candle flickering in the wind. It's a music site. Uh, I don't know. No, it's a photo site, a site that shares photos. I guess because of the flicker of the projector or something? I don't know. Names don't matter to various degrees because names of the addresses don't matter. It's about your content, your keywords, what are your titles and tags and all of that, which we'll cover. So if you're trying to get the perfect web address, don't beat yourself up if you can't get it. And there's so many examples of cyber squatters which are people or companies that buy names in hopes that one day you will buy the name that you want. They bought it before you, they're not doing anything with it, but they gladly sell it to you. Instead of the regular price of $20, they'll sell it to you for $200, $2,000, $10,000. There's been examples throughout the, the years of, of, of uh, the world of the web that someone bought you know, Microsoft.com before Microsoft bought it, and they sold it to Microsoft for $10,000. And there's been examples where someone tried to do that, and then they got sued for $100,000. So you don't have to worry about getting your perfect web address. It's one of the factors that helps you, but not the only one. Next up, which also helps you, uh, but helps you more, that is, is the description. So in this case, Lucha Libre is an awesome taco shop located in Mission Hill, San Diego, with the freshest ingredients, top quality meats, and funky delicious new menu items cooked to perfection. Keywords, Taco Shop, Mission Hill, San Diego, fresh ingredients. Uh, we don't have to care about, like in the old days, that we had fresh ingredients and freshest ingredients. We don't have to care about variations of words anymore like we used to. The search engines are smart enough to understand the variations. So in the old days, we would fill our description and titles and such with different versions of the same thing. So gray hat, um, variations of a word, fresh plus freshest. What, what's maybe a synonym for fresh? Made to order. 
we don't know the full list of what are the synonyms. That's part of the trade secrets that the search engines won't tell us because then the competition will use it, or worse, the spammers will. So if you can use variations of words, um, that could be helpful. Black hat. Every keyword I can think of, or not complete sentences. That spot right there of the description is there for you to write something meaningful for a person, not to trick the search engine full of keywords. I'm not going to trick it by simply writing San Diego period, Carnesada period, Taco Shop period, Mission Hills period, uh, Fresh Ingredients period. I'm not going to write just keywords in there. It's for a real sentence or two of content. Is there a character limit? There is, and it's a little different for each search engine, but do you notice over here with El Moro, it cuts off at a certain point. Uh, I'm not exactly sure the character limit. It's somewhere around 140 to 160 characters. Uh, it doesn't, doesn't quite matter what the character is, but obviously this chunk of information is a little too big. This one is concise, so it's slightly longer, and it cuts off at a certain point. So if you can get across your message in approximately 160 characters, that would be good. And we can say 160 characters. is a good length. Yes. You can write a whole essay in that description box, but the search engine will only look at the first few sentences to determine importance. So again, most important words first. Because at a certain point they get cut off, and the search engines change this. They used to have a little bit more space. The fonts of the search engines used to be different, and you could see more. They increased the font for visibility, which means less words. So it's somewhere around there, so your most important words first. White hat complete sentences for people. When people see all of these results, they're going to see the titles, they're going to read the descriptions, and hopefully they see something in the description that stands out to them, and then they click. It's not about keyword stuffing and trying to game the search engines. It's about trying to show what people care about the people that are actually searching. Lastly, uh, location, or uh, lastly, the deep links. Uh, via webmaster tools, we edit this. You can't exactly tell the search engine, use these links. Uh, but when we get to Webmaster Tools, we'll see how we can work with that. So I won't... Um, uh, these other results, you can, you can see they're all like that too. They've got titles, address, keywords. You can look at them yourself. What I want to do is, continuing here, the third part. You're then actually going to click and view the results of these sites. You're going to put aside your jealousy and look at the competition. You're going to look at it in a and try to do it in, a, in an objective way because what we're trying to do is if we don't have the language for it, that's fine. I have examples here. But we're trying to analyze them, the competition, in an objective way. Maybe I don't know anything about web design or what works well on a site or what's good the theory and, and, and what's the heat map for this site and all this fancy stuff. No worries, I've got some examples. These are some things to, to pay attention to, to the competition. When was their website updated? Do I see any sort of date of when was last updated? What's the copyright? Are they, are they up to date on their blog and such? 
uh, do they have a blog? Are they are they are they writing stuff? Are they writing articles and content? Uh, what does the design look like? Does it look like from the 90s? Are they not being ironic with that kind of design? Are they modern? Is it easy to use? Uh, is the site mobile friendly? What if I go to their website on my mobile phone? Does the site shrink and change to look good on a mobile device? Or is the text tiny and I have to zoom in? Oftentimes when text is tiny on a website is it's not mobile friendly and that's a detriment because more and more people use a mobile device to browse a website. And then intangibly, what do you like about the site and what don't you like? This doesn't have to be any sort of like real answer. It's like, oh, I like their colors. I don't like that I have to scroll so much to find what I'm looking for. So you're just going to kind of write some impressions about what the, sh what the result is, what the competition is. And for that, the purpose of that is to see what their site is about, how does mine relate. They're number one for several reasons. And I'm trying to figure out, looking at their site, what, what are they about and why are they so highly ranked and can I do things that are um, similar or better and just trying to understand them. So Lucha Libre, it's all about mixing uh, Mexican luchadores with uh, tacos and Mexican food. They actually have a little ring in the corner where they really do the fights while you enjoy your taco. Okay, so the design is like, okay, I see the pictures, I see locations, menu, story, catering. They've got here story instead of about us. You may think, well, I need an about us page because I need to talk about what my business is. And, and, and you do, but it doesn't have to be named about us. It could be story. It could be something related to that. Maybe someone sees it like, and they don't think about it as an about page, but they click. They're on the site. They're reading about them. And they're, they're browsing the site and keep, keeping people interested in the site. Catering, that's a top thing visible at the top here uh, to, to get into this. How much does it all cost? I want to look around. Maybe I see it, maybe I don't. $10 per person, minimum 10 people. The TJ package, $5 per person, minimum 10. 25 TJ dogs. Hmm. Contact, there's their contact information. Order online. Lucha gear. You can buy merchandise. Buy a t-shirt. That's all of SEM. You, uh, they want people to buy these things. Um, buy one of these t-shirts or purses. Uh, buy one of these t-shirts and wear it around town and people see it and I want to go to a taco shop. That seems interesting. Free advertising. Now this hasn't been updated. <laughs> this hasn't been updated in a little while. But the, mess the message is still evergreen, I guess. Uh, 2013. So I'm just kind of browsing around, and then I see that this is got e-commerce, and that they can do PayPal, and they see e-commerce by Shopify. Maybe I need to sell products. Maybe I need Shopify or WordPress or something. So this part of the analysis then. based on the handout. When was the site updated? So I'm looking at their site. I do see a copyright of 2018 at the bottom. Their news hasn't been updated in a while. Yes? Um, with regards to copyright, if you, I've, I've seen a lot of websites where they're not updating that, you know, it'll say 2016 or something like that. Is that just the omission on their part from the webmaster, or should that be a flag for us? On this other part of their site, it does say 2017. Yeah. Um, the reason to pay attention to the last updated and such is part of what I said earlier regarding that age of a website is one of the factors that helps ranking. So just for our analysis, it doesn't matter 
what the copyright is only relative to our own. Have we existed longer than them, or have they existed longer? Sometimes people write copyright 2006 to 2017, and they kind of give a range of their history. That's not wrong or right or anything, that's just a little bit of history there. For us, it could help us in terms of, okay, well, we started our website last year, two years ago. We could have that history that we're building to help us get, uh, get found. Now, as for who does it and, and, and all of that, yeah, it's probably the webmaster hasn't updated it. Uh, sometimes the site has a, a widget or a feature that auto-updates, so it's an irrelevant. But in this case, oftentimes it's that someone didn't update it, and that's just sort of informational. Yes? But that's not what the search engine is looking for the page of the site. It's literally how long is this site? Exactly. This, exactly. Anyone can write this. Copyright 2001. I can do that today. The search engine can look elsewhere in the global directory of all websites, and that has a date that no one can change. Yeah. Follow up question. If you add a website, but it's just not more than a correct page, does that give you that history when you go to build a page? Yeah. So like I've, I've been going through the marketplace of data concerts, I've switched services. So when I go next to the page, it's going to Yes. Yeah, the first time that name is created and claimed, it goes into the main directory, and that then is building that history. Uh, so you could use that now, finally, and then have a little bit of that extra SEO power that will help you go past the competition. Because the opposite is that spammers. I'm going to go as a spammer and create 10 websites today, so I have zero history. Whereas me, the competitor that has had the website for a year, that's, that's one way that I get past the spammers because my website has existed longer. That's funny, when I did my search, there were a lot of Mark Ryan's going on Mark mm. There you go. So, just for the notes here, Lucha Libre, uh, home page, uh, copyright uh, 2007, shop page 2008. And I didn't even notice this until I looked carefully. But when I went over to the Lucha Gear, Lucha Libre Taco Shop My Shopify com, I went to a completely different site. They've got their whole shopping cart on a completely different site. I would have never noticed. You would have never noticed unless I pointed it out. Uh, so Lucha Libre Taco Shop com is where they've got their main site and such. Their, their gear, their products are on another site. And then let's see about their order online. That one is on their site reserve, a booth order online. Oh, actually, this one goes to toasttab.com. This is not good or bad or anything. I'm just telling you. Uh, they have their main website to promote themselves. Then they've got their products being sold on one site with its infrastructure, which they're probably paying for. Then they've got their buy the, buy the food on the website in another website, another infrastructure, which they're paying for. And that's very common nowadays. We do that for clients. We see that for clients all over the time, all over the place. Uh, if you want a certain e-commerce and such, there are websites that focus on these things. You pay their subscription rate to have your shop made that way, and then you've got e-commerce. Or you do it yourself manually with more effort and, and complication, maybe. So again, about these addresses, so they've got Lucha Libre there, they've got Lucha Libre Gourmet Taco Shop here, and the other one, Lucha Libre Taco Shop. Um, what else to do here? Does it have a blog? Yes or no? What do you like about it? What you don't like about it? Okay, so let's be try to be a little critical here. If we look on this website together, and let's say they were our competition, what would you say you like about the site? Yeah. Just one at a time, yes? Graphics are cool. You can do eye-catching graphics. Good. I uh, catching graphics. Anything else? What what else do people like? Yep. Yeah. 
really, really San Diego unique if you know that movie. Yeah, it's just when you scroll down, it really stands out at So we could say. Geographically designed, basically. Local, local flair. Um, anything so else? Easy to navigate. Easy to navigate. I think uh, the food don't match with <laughs> We can get that to the second part of it. What don't we like? So we can say, um, uh, doesn't make sense. How does this food relate to this topic? Well, you. That's their gimmick, exactly. There's many taco shops all over San Diego. What can we do different? Ours is also related to luchadores. So that's a thing that we can say we, we don't like or we don't get it, but I would say probably it's their gimmick. Okay, let's talk about a couple other things. What don't you like? Like what? Yeah, uh, non sequitur. Uh, am I? in the right place. I heard this, my friend telling me about this great taco shop, and I went to the shop, but it's got wrestlers on it, so I left. That doesn't seem right. Any other... Any other uh, negatives, what people might say that they don't quite like? Yeah. Maybe they're getting a certain clientele that like that kind of Tacos and, and wrestlers. Because of the fun factors. Sure. Uh, uh, help, help me. How would that be like a negative? You like, saw that picture. They're just like, you know, because that, that kind of wrestling attracts so like that WWE. Either you like it or don't like it. You know? Yeah, so then it could be right here. It's confusing for me. Uh, am I in the right place? Yeah. I have to say that place is busy. <laughs> that's not a, that's not a negative, but yes. So the idea is just that we're going to look at the websites of the competition. Uh, we're going to make notes about them. We're going to write what we like and what we don't. Uh, we're going to see something like this. Okay, on my website of my taco shop, I don't have Facebook. I don't have Twitter or Instagram. I'm behind. Well, after I do the analysis of the other sites, let, let me take a quick look at El, El, Mo, El Rey Moro. Uh, if I look here, okay, completely different style. looks much more traditional. Um, you know, this top graphic kind of looks empty. Why is there like one square graphic and it's kind of empty up there? The food looks nice here. Call us today. That's cool. Uh, there's the food. That looks like a coupon. Uh, it looks like a coupon, but I can't actually cut it out, and I don't get a deal, so that's confusing. Yeah. So you're just kind of like looking at it. What do you like? What you don't like? So Fonts are cool. What's that? So much text. A little too much text. It's kind of a big old story. Why choose us? Our specials, etc. They could divide that to a different screen. And here's the contact us phone number again down here. Good. And the we also cater, but that's so tiny. And why isn't this clickable for me to go hire you as a caterer? So you may not have the language of a web designer. I don't I don't expect you to, I don't need you to, but you need to look at these sites and see what you like viscerally, what you don't like, what makes sense, what doesn't make sense. Copyright 2018. They're connected to the yellow pages. So again, the site looks kind of, you know, old-fashioned-ish, a little conservative, and they're using the yellow pages, because that's kind of retro or passe, perhaps. But their phone number is there, and their food pictures look good, and there's coupons over here instead of on the home page. Testimonials. <coughs> so competitor analysis is that, looking at the competition with publicly available info. Do I see any social media anywhere? Nope, this isn't exactly social media. This is share what I see here to my Facebook or my Twitter or my LinkedIn. Tell people on my LinkedIn about this. And you can't tell that unless I told you. It looks like, yeah, they're on LinkedIn. But if you were to click, it would pop up to say, OK, log into your LinkedIn so you can go tell your friends about this place. It's not the same as the one at Lucha Libre, which is click here to go see our pictures on Instagram. Check out all of our pictures. Here's our further SEM promotion. Whereas 
uh, these guys over here have, you like us? Uh, go tell email people about how great we are. Tell your friends on Twitter about how great we are. Just after years of seeing this kind of way that the social networks are shown, um, this off, this number often means the number of shares or the number of people that have you know spread the word. So we kind of could tell that way. Yeah. So, so you know, it is a company, right? Maybe they buy through this company, and that's how they. Into the website. Yeah, they could have gone through Yellow Pages. You know, Yellow Pages were the number one way to get your information back in the day, and then there was Ye uh, Yahoo, then Google, being etc. So they're very passe nowadays, but they're still around. People still use the Yellow Pages. You still get it on your front door, even though you don't want it anymore. And people still use the yellowpages.com because they trust the Yellow Pages in the real world. So Yellow Pages has had to evolve to also make websites, and perhaps sort of generic ish websites for a very affordable price. And this company bought it, and then they've got their logo down there, and it also says down here, this company owns the rights, yes, but then the logos of Yellow Pages and such belong to someone else. Actually, wait a minute, Yellow Pages, LLC, Yellow Pages, all rights reserved. Uh, huh, that's the copyright of Yellow Pages, not exactly theirs. Yeah. So they probably bought into that company, I mean, into Yellow Pages, and... Yeah, and they're also promoting themselves over here, find us on Yellow Pages. Yeah, so... Maybe they did. Maybe they did. Pay, uh, maybe Yellow Pages paid that site and just paid. Yeah, it does look a little canned. But that whole site tells me that they've got a web page just because you know we have to have a website. Yeah. Nowadays, we don't know yeah. That. True, but it may be working for them because of the third number one result. Maybe they created. If Yellow Pages is a bit passe, I don't doubt. Then they created it back in like two thousand two, and they still have it. And there's the history there that's built. OK, so this is new. Uh, I hadn't really noticed this on Google searches. After I clicked on a result and I come back, it, did you notice it kind of highlighted the last result that I clicked on? And it's also giving me recommendations. Why are they showing my competitors on my results? <laughs> of the business yeah so the search engine is giving me results of what I may also care about Taco shops in La Jolla I'm close enough that I might try to find one there and other ones over here so this is just again the search engines changing I don't think I had noticed this until today because often because I don't think I've seen that on searching on the mobile devices not yet so search engines are changing now, uh, since we're just about out of time, didn't quite get to this one, but in general, this is the same sort of way, but this time we would be searching with thinking in terms of long tail keywords. Instead of searching taco shop, I would search for, you know, Sinaloa style taco shop in San Diego. I'm looking for that kind of taco place not just generically taco shop I want a certain style so I get some Yelp results I get La Sinaloense restaurant although it's a Yelp result again I'm gonna try to find results La Sinaloense let's Sinaloense restaurant.com in Spring Valley um, so Salud SD Hemp Infused Taco Shop has opened in the Arts District. <laughs> so, uh, this is the related to the same competitor analysis, but now I'm trying to think of more detailed words, variations. Um, you know, what if I search for taco joint instead of taco shop? Uh, or, you know, greasy spoon or something like that. So um, this part of it, of the analysis, of the competitor analysis, is like that. Now I've also got a note here about in a clean search engine. As you use these websites, these browsers and, and search engines, it creates a history. So I am going to get skewed results as I use the search engines, not because it's trying to trick you, it's trying to help you. You seem to be searching about these topics, let's find you more of this topic. 
what I'm saying here is you need to find where in your web browser do you clear your cookies do you clean out the history do you kind of like reset your browser for a clean state so that it's not giving you biased results and you may know about like maybe going into private or incognito mode that's not the same this is gonna stop from this point creating a history all history you have had in the past is still there so even though now I'm in private mode and I go back to Google and, and look for taco shop you know it's starting to remember what I still had previously searched when I wasn't in private mode so just going into private mode is not the full answer of what I'm saying here you need to know you need to look up in your web browser Firefox Internet Explorer Safari whatever how do I clean my cookies how do I clean out the cache how do I reset it to be clean well what I'm saying in my notes is the problem with that is it's gonna forget your password for your bank and it's gonna forget your login to your email so you get a different web browser one web browser where you use for your day-to-day -day stuff and then go download for free a different web browser and use that one as the one that you clean out and don't save your cookies and passwords and such and that's the one you use for the more raw and uh, you know correct competitor analysis that it doesn't have a history it's building up about you we don't have time to do it but that's the idea and then you start to compile as you search 10 simple keywords and five phrases which as the class goes on we'll see how to apply it to our site and then if you get the book check out that chapter where it tells you a little bit more but the idea is we're looking at the competition to see what's good and bad about them we're trying to figure out keywords and phrases we're gonna see how we apply it on our website how we apply it off of our website social media and such and there's a lot that we cover in the class so much that we're 10 minutes past the moment they stopped paying me so <laughs> final quick questions I want to put all of these notes and examples into the network folder right now and then all of these videos that I've been recording remember you can request them on uh, by sending me an email and I'll give you all of that